Well, since the last video you saw was about the water process in my lake and how I drain and fill it and made the valve, here's how my building works. First you'll notice I have an eave trough just on one half of the building. So that's a 40 foot long piece which runs into a piece of ABS one and a half inch inside diameter which goes into the wall inside the building. So the same pipe continues through the building running on the inside of the wall down to a giant propane tank which isn't a propane tank anymore now it's a water cistern. This scrap about 200 Canadian gallon or imperial gallon propane tank I got for free and I'll show you how the system works. Of course whenever it rains water wants to come down this pipe. Now I can shut it off if I want and if I shut that off nothing happens except that it backs the water upstairs to where the hot tub is right in that corner so that if I open that valve the water will come out and if I don't open that valve well then just the pipe fills all the way up and the eave trough just flows over onto the ground. But when the uh, this pipe is open water is always running in there and the beautiful thing is even if it doesn't rain it's a dewy day in the morning you get about five gallons of water in your barrel anyways so every day it's sort of filling itself up. So of course if water's going in there the air has to be displaced and go out so the air goes out this tube which is right there on the side of the wall so it just pours onto the ground it's only rainwater. Well how this system works well, those aren't all compressed airlines. I use compressed airline in this building as water line. So if it freezes when I'm not here in the winter time, because this building isn't heated in the winter time during the week when nobody's here, uh, it can easily unthaw and no fittings will be broken. In the 20, I mean in the 10 years that this system, or 11 years this system's been here, it's never got cold enough in this room to freeze the big tank, so I'm not worried at all. So if you wanted to use this system, once it's full of water, of course, doesn't matter which one you shut off first, shut off the two that go outside. It works off compressed air coming in, which is right here. Also gives you a handy compressed air connection in case you want to do some painting or blowing inside your room when you're cleaning or whatever. So it's got an ordinary pressure regulator for a compressed air system you might have in your shop. So if these two are closed, you allow compressed air to go in there and open this valve. Well that tube is just a piece of steel pipe that's welded almost all the way to the bottom. Doesn't quite touch the bottom because of course there's sediments from dust on the roof or maybe a piece of grass or shit the birds dropped up there. Well there goes the compressor. It's in the basement. So I can adjust whatever pressure I want in here up to 140 psi but I usually keep it at 45 psi. So when you hear it stop hissing, tank is full. Water pressure of course works, but it's got more neat innovation other than that. It's got a pressurized backup tank in the basement that's about seven gallons. So that while this thing is filling and unpressurized and open to the environment, the water system still works for several toilet flushes or washing your hands or doing a load of dishes, even while it's filling. I'll show that to that show that to you in a second. First I'll show how you exhaust the air out of here when you want to set it to fill mode. Well imagine your system's already pressurized and you don't need any more pressure in the tank. You have these levers shut off and you want to set it for fill which I always do when I'm not here. So you open this one and it makes a big fart. Releases the pressure in the tank. Then open this one and it's just set for fill mode which it's set every time when I'm not here. Now even though there's no pressure in that tank, water still, still works the same. Just like I said, toilet still works, everything else for quite a while. So I'll show you the second part of the system, the backup pressure tank. Well there's the air compressor that you just heard running. The water heater. Well nestled in this corner, hard to see. Well, that's a great big natural gas container that came off a taxi. I garbage picked that too. So it's a big long tall cylinder about three and a half feet tall that can hold 2200 PSI safe working load. Well I always keep some air pressure in there 
which I add with my compressor, you can see the little nipple on the right. And that leaves that container about one third full of compressed air all the time. And that allows the system to have its own backup pressure when the other tank upstairs is filling. So that's how it works. But there's even goes one step farther. As you can see there, there's a great big recycled water tank that used to be a white glue container. That's a thousand liters. And on the wall is an old-fashioned cistern system pump. Just a positive displacement pump so it doesn't need primed and it sucks rainwater out of this container too. So there's another valve in the shop and that same black pipe you see in the wall upstairs attaches to this one so at the same time I can load this container up too with water which it's full right now and it's just rainwater so you don't drink it and if the one upstairs runs out well then I've got a thousand more liters in the basement and it stays tight and dry so it doesn't make the room humid and all I gotta do is just switch this on plug in the cord to that receptacle and then this system is working and it's got its own pressure valve which reads off that tank which turns it off and on automatically when necessary now all of this system cost me almost no money to build I never made a system like this before in my life because I never made a building before in my life and this is the building I made you know the other building got burnt down by arsonists but it sure does work very well you can see more of those compressed air lines used as water lines so they don't freeze and as you can see all the plumbing in the building runs on the outside of the walls so that it, it doesn't pick up cold from the outside in the winter times. It sure does get cold here in the winter time. And so when you light up the fire, if it is frozen, it all thaws in about a half hour. So, it's a really simple system. Every trailer should have a system like this with expandable rubber hose. And something like this, it's totally dependable, no maintenance whatsoever, and fills by itself. Cool. Now that pond's been filling now for 23 hours since I showed you the video yesterday, so let's go see how full it filled itself by now. As you saw in the video yesterday, it was raining really hard at the end of the day. Well, there's a fridge bucket with rain. It rained two and a half inches in 1.5 hours. So that kind of helped fill up my pond too, but it turned it all murky brown. The water normally fills up crystal clear when you don't get a heavy downpour like that. So let's go take a look. Oh, one more thing. There's a redneck water heating system too. Well, there's a copper pipe that runs into those two compressed air lines. So it's copper along there on the wood stove pipe. And it goes on top of the barrel where it's all wrapped and coiled. 50 feet of 3 quarter inch uh, air conditioner grade copper pipe. There you can see it better coiled up on top of the wood stove. So that gives you some instant hot water almost once you're, whenever you have the fireplace on. Great for just washing your hands or doing something small. And if you want a shower or something, you just turn on the electric water heater a couple hours in advance. And get it all warmed up and then you've got 40 gallons of hot rainwater. You just don't drink the stuff. You know, it might have bird poop in it. All that we drink here other than beer is water from a water cooler. So here we are in the same spot as yesterday. Sky Hill, the island, and you can see the underwater road now is showing itself. When it's filled to the right depth, which is just the bottom of the dock, the underwater road will be about halfway between your knee and your crotch. So you can just lift up your short pants or your bathing suit a little bit and get out, get out to the island. Keep from getting your whole body wet if you don't want to. Now we'll go over there and show you the spring. The boat's starting to fill up again. It looks nice having a sunken ship on the property. Well, that spring sure did a good job. Look how high it's climbed up that 10-foot post. It's only got five more feet to go. That's all in 23 hours. Sweet. A little help from Mother Nature, of course. There's all that muddy spot we were walking in. Yep, this weekend's going to be all beautiful. The mud will have settled down by then. And we might have enough water to even go swimming if it's not too cold. Well, I'm not going to talk about this bike, but I'm going to talk about my next basket case project. It's exactly the same. Someone's getting a buzz. Anyways, that's an XL500, not an XL250. It's a 1982 model, but 
probably any old XL 500 is the same. They started making them in 1978 and of course I can see my basket problem. Supposedly the motor still barely ran but had no power. Well you can see why. Both rocker arms are deeply grooved and heavily worn. The bushing holes in the head or the rocker cover are all wore out and of course the same spot in the head. Camshafts completely worn wrong and even cracked on the drive hub. So even though this head probably holds good compression and valves are probably fine, the head's screwed because that bushing area is all worn out so the cam would flop around. That area is worn out. These are wore out. Camshaft's no good. So I need some head. Yep. Head for a 500 or 500 XR. 500 XL or XR. Honda Enduro bike. Now I don't mind paying for whatever it costs. If anybody's got these parts and wants to sell it to me for a reasonable price and I don't mind paying for shipping. Got that bike for a free donation and I'd love to get her going this year. I just love XLs. I bought that thing 29 years ago and drove it on the road for 15 years. Now it's got 75,000 kilometers on it. Still starts in one kick. Only thing I did to the motor in all those years was timing chain which I made a video of and changed the, changed the rings once and valve seals and that's it.